This is a Beetle Conservation District owns um, owns about 400 acres here. They've got um, a piece of ground they're able to take possession of about a little over 20 years ago, 20, 25 years ago. Um, everything you're looking at was at one point um, actually irrigated cropland. Um, when they took it, they got rid of the irrigation units um, and see this back to a mostly native warm season mix. Um, they do have some native cool seasons in there also, but it's predominantly a warm season mix. They lease it to a young producer, a younger producer in the county um, who runs his livestock out here. Um, here several years ago, um, working with the board, um, decided they had a good opportunity to kind of turn this into a demonstration, a demonstration farm or production farm, whatever we want to call it. Um, so uh, working with the producer, we came up with a way to kind of do some different uh, grazing management out here. It was just divided into three large units. Um, now we've got it uh, divided into about 13 separate units. Um, so there's a lot more movement of the livestock out here. Um, we've got some cells that are more of our traditional rotation, and then we've got some that are a little, a little more intense. So it's a high hoof count for a short duration. Our goal out here is really just to, is to demonstrate to, to producers, showing them that uh, a lot of this stuff can work. Um, and that actually it's beneficial for your pocketbook too. You can actually, um, maybe increase your herd percentage out here, have a few more livestock out here, and still have more grass. So yeah, we've fired this area several times uh, with fence. Um, we use the old irrigation well to provide water, so we've piped in um, several thousand feet of uh, water pipeline out here. Um, we put in some tanks. Uh, we've centralized all the tanks just to allow some flexibility if we ever want to um, throw some hot wires or electric fen fence out here to increase our management. Um, do a lot of monitoring out here to keep track of, of you know, if what we're trying to do, if we're actually accomplishing that, or if we need to change our management or look at things differently. Uh, we've got more of a rangeland specialist that's out here every couple of weeks during the grazing season. Um, he's checking for forage production and um, just the, the plant community out there, if what we're trying to accomplish, if we're seeing more of something or less of another. What we're coming up on right now is uh, we call this our soil health plot. Um, it's just a small 10 acre field that was previously managed just for a food plot. Uh, you know, so it'd be sorghum or corn um, and just not a lot of fertilizer to it. Uh, very little fertility added and then they would disc it under in the spring. Um, here several years ago, we just turned this into our no-till soil health demonstration. Um, and so our goal out here is um, a couple of things. Um, take a lot of soil tests out here so we can collect a lot of data um, and so actually over the past course of the past four years we've taken the organic matter percentage from just under uh, three percent to right now we're at 3.9 almost four um, percent so it's a pretty quick turnaround that's even faster than I would have imagined we could go up one percentage uh, point for organic matter um, it's obviously no-till we throw uh, some type of cover crop out here no matter what the what the commodity crop is out here. We interseed into corn. Um, we follow a small grain crop out here uh, with cover crops. Um, harvest it and immediately come back in with a cover crop mix. Um, even last year we had soybeans and we did some cereal rye um, with some clover in it. Uh, that came up in the fall and then overwintered and that came this spring. Um, this spring we let the the cereal rye come up and it was really dry we just didn't catch any rain this spring um, so we terminated the terminated the cereal rye um, and our intent was to follow up with the row crop but we were just so dry we didn't think we were gonna have good luck uh, so we changed our change our management changed our thoughts and we just put a pretty diverse uh, mix of cover crops out here uh, we got about 16 different species out here most of what you're seeing is um, is the millet but there's a lot going on out there so the district's owned it for 20, 25 years, but really we just started implementing a lot of this. This grazing system, we started installing the fencing and water lines here just a couple years ago, and this is the first year we were able to fully implement it as designed. Um, the cropland stuff uh, with the salinity plot and the soil health plot, this is our fifth year of doing that, okay? Um, so really not, 
I haven't been really doing it too long out here, but we're already seeing some things that have turned around even faster than I would have hoped. Um, you know, the organic matter percentage on the one up there is one example. Starting to restore, reclaim some of these saline spots is is definitely one area where um, I think I, I'm, I'm pretty realistic in, in the time frame. I know it, it, in those, those, those areas didn't form overnight, so we're not gonna get rid of them overnight. Um, but I certainly think it's realistic where a producer can do something like this and get some pretty decent production off them in, in a couple of years. You know, I think the part that excites me most about what the district has with their land out here is that we can use this as, as an opportunity to show producers that this stuff, work, that what we're trying to sell them works. Um, you know, we're not just out selling conservation just to sell conservation. Uh, we're actually showing that this stuff can work. It can, uh, it can be good for your land. It can be good for your pocketbook. You know, and in the end, those two, two things, your pocketbook and the, and the land, improving on both of the, improving on the land's gonna improve both. And I'm hoping that producers are, as they come and we give, you know, one-on-one -on -one tours out here, or they come to our field events or our tours, um, they can see some of this stuff. It draws a lot of interest. Um, whenever we take someone out here, we've got tours out here, it always, over the next couple of weeks, we'll have lots of questions, you know, what was in that mix again? or what did you do here again? You know, I want to try this on one of my quarters. Um, so really, we're, we're seeing improvements in what we're doing out here. Um, to be honest, some things don't always work, you know, but that's part of learning, learning too. And I'd rather have us do something out here and not work that way. We can, we can tell someone that's making a living out there in the land, don't do this because it doesn't, it doesn't work. Um, or do this, or, hey, we had great success with this. Maybe this is something you should look at for your operation. Our producers can see this and they can, take it out to their operation to make it work and then their neighbor says hey what'd you do over there you know why are you doing that and they talk with their neighbor and you know and I just kind of hope it has that ripple effect you know you just drop that rock in the pond and the wave just kind of keeps going out I, that's what excites me most I think is that guys can they can make this work on their operation it's not just the conservation guy telling you to do this because he because he likes conservation so.